This is Lesson 11-3, Charting a Budget. The objectives of this lesson are to create and use a budget checkoff matrix and visualize and interpret a budget using a pie chart, a bar graph, a line graph, and a budget line graph. Some key terms in this lesson are budget chart, budget checkoff chart, budget line graph, sectors, and central angles. We'll see these as we go along through the lesson and I'll point them out at the time. All right, so how can you visualize your budget? There are def many different ways to visualize your budget. And why is it so important to know how and when money is coming in and going out? Well, that's the whole idea behind a budget is that you're only p spending what you have available and you don't take and spend too much and you're able to take and put uh, money into different categories as savings and pay certain bills, okay? And a visualizing this in a chart or a graph is usually very helpful as pictures tend to be very descriptive and help an individual to really understand what's going on. So let's look at example one. In this example, you're asked to create a year-long budget checkoff matrix. Okay, this was one of the terms that it mentioned early on, this budget checkoff matrix, okay? That keeps track of the following household expenses and when they are due. And notice there's different expenses here, mortgage, utility, sanitation, insurance, and to the right of them is, you know, whether they're paid monthly as a mortgage, sanitation is paid quarterly, insurance is paid semi-annually, uh, a landline telephone is monthly, a cellular telephone is monthly. So what we're going to do is take each of these expenses and indicate when, how frequently they're uh, paid, okay? So let's see what it looks like. Okay, so here we go. We've got on the left here, all our expenses, all right? They're listed here uh, from mortgage down to vets. Across the top, we've got the different months of the year. So we've got the full year, January through December. Now notice, for example, mortgage, as an X in every month. That means we pay it every single month. Sanitation, however, has an X every three months, only March, June, September, and December. And uh, let's see, childcare is every other month. It's down here, it's February, April, June, etc. Then the vet is only twice a year. It's June and December. So th these basically, this X's tell you when you take and have to pay these different bills. As I say, a lot of them are monthly. Some of them are quarterly. Some of them are semi-annually. So this is, just gives you an idea of when you have to pay certain bills. All right, let's look at example two. Jeff budgets his monthly expenses as follows. Household, 40%. Education, 25%. Transportation, 15 Health, 5 Savings, 10 And miscellaneous, 5 He used a software program to construct this pie chart. All right? Notice, it's a pie chart. Looks a lot like a uh, pie. To show his expense percentages. How did his category percentages affect the construction of the chart? Well, let's see how this was actually created. All right, so let's take a look at household, which is the first, first category. That's 40% of his budget goes to household. Now, a full circle or a full pie, if you will, is 360 degrees. So if he's 40% uh, of the budget goes for a household, then it's 0.4 times 360 
or 144 degrees. And that you can see here, okay? So that takes up about 144 degrees of the circle. Education, 25%. Multiply that by 360. Education is 90% of the uh, circle. And we could actually see here, this is a right angle here. And we can go all the way down. Now we add up all the degrees and the de all the degrees are, are gonna come out to be 360 degrees. If we add up all the percentages, it comes out to be 100%. So the full circle represents his budget and the different sectors, if you will, represent the different categories that he has. All right, let's look at example three. Kate and Paul budget $800 per month for transportation as shown in the pie chart. What information can you conclude from the pie chart? Well, if we look at the pie chart, we can see that the majority of budget of the budget is spent on fuel, okay? This is the biggest sector right here. Repairs and parking are similar, okay? Parking and repairs look to be very close to being the same, all right? Trains and bus are the second highest, okay? This is the second biggest sector, if you will, of the uh, pie. The third would be insurance. The least amount is spent on car wash, all right? Car wash, this sector right here, is the smallest sector, and that's spent on car wash. Repairs is about half of fuel. So repairs, if you look at fuel and you look at repairs, repairs is about half of what they spend on fuel. And then miscellaneous, this sector up here, is about half of the trains or buses, okay? So it's about half of this right here. So that's what you can conclude by looking at the pie chart for Kate and Paul. All right, let's look at example four. Here they want us to construct a bar graph using the information about health-related cost from the table below, all right? Okay, so we've got various categories on the left and we've got uh, the various months, January through December, and the amounts for each of those months. And they want us to create a bar graph. All right, so all the categories were health-related. So this, this is gonna be titled Health-Related Expenses, all right? And you notice on the left, anywhere from zero to 1,200, and then the months January through December and the various heights of each of the bars indicates how much was spent on health related expenses in each of the months. What we've got here are three line graphs, okay? Different colors, we got week one, all right, week one is uh, the blue line, all right? Week two is the red line, and week three looks like it's the gray line, okay? And you can notice that they're fairly close here, but then on Friday, they tend to jump up, all right? And basically, all same, similarly on Saturday, then Sunday, it drops down a little bit. But she has the, her highest usage is on Friday, followed by Saturday. All right, example six. Beth is a coffee lover. In her budget, Beth has a section for coffee. She has budgeted $90 per month to spend on the coffee she buys in two different locations. At Gas Mart, a cup of coffee, coffee costs a dollar. At the Perfect Coffee Company, a cup of coffee costs $3. She tries to balance both through a month. Construct a budget line that shows different combinations of the two types of coffee purchase options which allow her to stay within her budget. Then, suppose she has to decrease her coffee budget by 27%. Identify and graph the new budget line. 
All right, so let's see what it's going to look like. All right, so let's look in the upper right corner here. All right, we've got C sub X times X plus C sub Y times Y is equal to B. B is the amount she has budgeted for coffee, all right? And that is $90, all right? Now, the cost of the first is the gas mark. That's only a dollar, okay? So that's one times X. The perfect coffee company uh, price is $3, so that becomes three times Y, So okay? So it's the number at Gas Mart times the number at the other higher priced uh, coffee shop. And we add those together and we should equal 90. Well, if I graph that, notice this is what we've got right here, all right? X plus three Y equals 90, all right? So if, for example, notice here at Gas Mart, if she buys from Gas Mart, 60 times, and from the perfect coffee company, 10 times, she'll be within budget. If, however, so that's represented by that point there. If, however, she buys 40 times from Gas Mart, and, which is less, but then 25 times from the perfect coffee company, and notice she's above budget here. And then lastly, let's assume she says 20 times from Gas Mart, six times from the Perfect Coffee Company, and in that case, she's below budget, okay? So there's the budget line. Ideally, she wants to stay on it. So this combination of 60-10 works, but 40-25 does not. 26 is well below budget, all right? So now let's see if she if she decreases her budget line by 20%, what happens? So instead of having uh, three, I'm sorry, x plus 3y equaling 90, now we're going to have x plus 3y equaling 80% of 90 or 72. So she has decreased her budget by 20%. And notice here is our line right here for the decreased budget. All right, so obviously the combinations are all going to have to take and be lower now. The 60-10 budget or combination will not work anymore. It has to be something less. So this is what her budget line will look like if she decreases it by 20%. So these are all different ways that we can budget, I'm sorry, graph our budget so we get some visualization of what our budget is actually going to look like.